If there's one word I would use to describe the 2010s, it would have to be epic. Not that the decade itself was epic, just that the decade was obsessed with shoving this word down your throat at every given turn, especially in advertising. I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with this word, in that I started saying it ironically because of how I overused it is, but I used it so much that I find myself saying it unironically like I'd see something on Twitter and go, Whoa, that's epic. Ugh. Which got me thinking, were any of these companies' attempts at sounding cool and hip actually successful? No. It's a good thing most companies only use it in their advertising though. Imagine if they used this day to determine something like the title, so people can groan in disgust years later anytime they hear it. <laughs> oh, oh no. Enter 2010's gritty dark take on the Mickey Mouse franchise, Disney's Epic Mickey. Now hearing the idea of a gritty, edgy Mickey Mouse would get any normal person to worry, because on paper that sounds like an awful idea. Especially nowadays since Mickey has been restricted to merely a company mascot in recent times. But this series is actually remembered rather fondly, with many thinking it was an extremely ambitious attempt at breathing new life into this franchise, and that it was cancelled too soon before it could reach its full potential. I myself grew up with the Epic Mickey series. As a matter of fact, I mentioned it in an earlier video. Along with Epic Mickey for the Wii. Kind of a contrast in gifts there. And as a kid, I absolutely loved it. But ever since then, I've wanted to revisit it and see if it was as good as everyone says, or if they're praising the ambition of the concept, rather than the execution. But for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about and somehow wound up on this video, let's talk about how Epic Mickey came to be. According to the most credible source I could find, Wikipedia, the original concept for this game came around in 2003, and was pitched to at the time Disney CEO Bob Iger. It was a game where Mickey Mouse would get sucked into a world of characters and locations from old Disney cartoons, mostly before the 1960s, with some exceptions of course. A large portion of the story in the game would revolve around perhaps Disney's most famous forgotten character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, but for reasons that I'll get into later, Walt Disney had lost the rights to his creation, and therefore the game had to be put on hold. Eventually in 2007, Disney managed to get the rights back for Oswald, and the sworn Spectre's company Junction Point Games started work on Epic Mickey. Looking through old interviews before the game released, it's clear just how much passion Warren had for making this game the best it could be, with him lamenting about how Mickey Mouse has managed to dominate almost every market except for video games. And he wants Mickey Mouse to be up there with the Marios and Sonics and... Yeah, looking back now, it's kinda sad to see how devoted he was to this project given its... quick demise. But anyways, Warren and his team were given access to the Disney archives, where they were able to pluck out whatever concept they wanted to throw in their game. It didn't even matter if they ever appeared in a short or movie, such as them finding concept art and designs for a cancelled movie about these mythical creatures called the Gremlins, who would take apart planes, and they were repurposed in Epic Mickey as the mechanics of their world, and are used to give the player tutorials. Think Omo Chai from Sonic, except there's like a million of them. That sounds awful, I know, but it's not that bad. And to complement this idea of mishmashing together a ton of forgotten ideas, the story of the game features Mickey Mouse one night finding Yen Sid, the wizard from Fantasia, creating a world for tossed aside characters, which Mickey proceeds to destroy almost immediately by spilling paint thinner all over it. Decades later, Mickey gets sucked back into the now dubbed Wasteland by the Shadow Blot. After escaping the Mad Doctor who is after his heart, and with the help of a gremlin named Gus, Mickey must find a way to escape this world and choose how much he wants to help the residents' respective plights along the way. And by choose, I mean you really get to choose. Through the use of paint and thinner, Mickey can either bring back parts of the world and create allies, or destroy the world and his enemies. And what you may not realise as you're doing it, is that your actions do have consequences by the end of the game. And if you're thinking, Wow, this sounds amazing, no wonder it's so well remembered. But why didn't it take off? <laughs> Well, you may have noticed I haven't really talked about the actual gameplay yet. And that's because while it's got a really creative story and a genius idea, you know, it's a game first and foremost. And I believe as a whole, Epic Mickey is an amazing game trapped inside an alright game. Now before you grab your pitchforks and torches for me claiming such heresy, let me explain myself first. The general gameplay of Epic Mickey is a standard 3D platformer. Mickey controls really well, even if his jump makes platforming a tad tedious at times. But the platforming never gets that complex, so I can forgive it. The game is mostly focused on the paintbrush mechanics. Like I mentioned before, with the use of paint you can either rebuild or destroy parts of Wasteland, such as creating platforms to jump on or just fixing up houses. And with it you can also make allies out of the blots who can help you in battle, or destroy them for good. This becomes way more interesting in boss fights, where you can choose to either make them nice again or straight up kill them. But as interesting as this concept is, they don't really do much to evolve it over the course of the game. You're always going to be doing the same thing with the brush for majority of the story, and at times it can get a bit repetitive. It also doesn't help that this is a Wii game, so of course there's some forced in motion controls. 
In order to shoot out paint, you have to point the remote at the screen and shoot that way, and it becomes very frustrating when you're not only trying to get the sensor to work properly, but at the same time you're fighting with the god-awful camera so you can see what you want to shoot. No joke, this has got to be one of the worst cameras I've ever experienced in a game. It is constantly going all over the place. And I can't help but feel like it was a result of the Wii controller limitation, with it having no second analog stick for you to easily control the camera. It doesn't make the game unplayable, but it really puts a damper on your enjoyment at times. The game also has a variety of 2D sections, which you jump through a projector Mario 64 style to access. They're used as transitions between locations and are all based on old Mickey Mouse cartoons like Steamboat Willie and Lonesome Ghosts. They're fun for what they are, but like the 3D segments, it's just really basic platforming you'd find in any other game. I know I'm being negative, but don't get me wrong, I really don't think this is a bad game, it's got a ton of great qualities. Again, such as the story. I absolutely love what they did with Oswald here. So back when Walt was making overwhelmingly popular Oswald cartoons, they were made under Universal Pictures, and when looking to renew their contract, Walt was not happy with the offer he was given, and decided to quit working on the Oswald cartoons, and then went on to create a new short featuring a character that went on to become the most successful cartoon character in history. Peg Leg Pete. Mickey Mouse. Travel forward to all these years later, when the game was rejected in 2003 due to Disney owning Oswald, a television sportscaster who had just signed a deal with Disney, Al Mitchells, was looking to join NBC, who had merged with Universal Pictures, coincidentally the current owners of Oswald. And so they did a sort of trade, you know, you give me the sportscaster, and I'll give you the cartoon rabbit. I can't help but feel bad for this man once he found out that he was worth a cartoon character from the 20s. And I love that they took this history of the character and integrated it into the plot. In the world of epic Mickey, Mickey is known as a famous cartoon character, and they're aware of the stuff that happened in our world, so naturally in this game Oswald is a bitter, spiteful character who hates Mickey with a passion for taking his spotlight, and it leads to so many interesting moments, like when Mickey gets excited to see the Walt Disney statue, only to get sad after seeing how Oswald defaced it, and it gives many great character exchanges like this. It only makes me wish this game had voice acting to give these moments more of a punch. Speaking of these cutscenes, it's great that they tried to go for a storyboard brought to life vibe. They're all fun, colourful and expressive, and even the few CG cutscenes have got amazing animation. I really want to love this game. And they're all exceeded through the amazing soundtrack, the music in this game is severely underrated. It's got this grand orchestral style but still manages to sound whimsical and quaint when it needs to be. They put so much effort into the little things. Like even giving Mickey his own damn ear engine to make sure he's always doing the iconic Mickey silhouette. And the worlds are all packed to the brim with details and charm, like I would highly recommend getting the art book for this game. But I can't help but wish that they had put some of that effort into the gameplay first before adding all the small things. Overall, while I think Epic Mickey excels at storytelling and the presentation is one of the best I've seen in the Wii, in the end it's a game, and in my personal opinion gameplay should go first. And while I don't think the gameplay is awful, I wouldn't even call it bad, I feel like it's just a very okay platform with great presentation and a lot of good ideas. Now the hype for this game was extremely high, so it's no surprise that it did well, selling around 1.3 million copies in its first month, so of course that means a sequel is in order. That's when we got 2012's Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. Again, I grew up with this game. Kinda. I got it for Christmas the year it came out for the Xbox 360, and I remember excitedly turning it on before proceeding to turn it off five minutes later and never touching it ever again. That's not a joke, I, I never touched it past Christmas Day. Look, the second the Mad Doctor started singing, I was done. That gave me secondhand cringe and I was a ten-year-old, so that's how you know it was cringe. Friends, 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 I stand before you a changed man! Of course, this means I'm not going to be able to give as much of an in-depth review of this one. I bought it on Steam to play for this video, but it just won't launch no matter what I do. Apparently, it's a common issue, so I'll just go off on what info I've collected about it. This game sets out to be bigger and better than its predecessor in every way, with the main focus being on the two-player gameplay, as one player controls Mickey and the other controls Oswald, who once again have to team up to investigate the cause of some recent tremors in Wasteland, with the help of the Mad Doctor who's changed his ways and is now a good guy, totally not evil anymore, you know where this is going. Other than the new mechanics you do from the tag team aspect, like using Oswald's ears as a propeller to fly a la Teals the Fox, the gameplay for the most part is the same as the first Epic Mickey. The game keeps up the presentation style of the original, which is a good thing, but it adds the brand new feature of voice acting, which makes the transition between games very jarring, but whatever, it's appreciated. And not only does it feature characters talking, but also singing. Anytime the Mad Doctor talks, it's in song. And while I get the idea behind it and can appreciate them trying to do something new, they're so few and far between that they feel a bit pointless in the end. It also ended up having many of the same issues that the first had, like despite them claiming to have made over 1,000 specific changes to the camera, 
Yeah, I'd like to see a list of these changes. It also suffers from the same kind of repetitive gameplay that doesn't change much over the course of the game, and even has some new issues like Oswald's AI being incredibly stupid and hard to work with. And the charm of seeing these forgotten Disney characters doesn't really work as well in a sequel because it's like, hey, remember this character? Yeah, they're in the last game. All this culminated in a game that, in theory, should be at the very least on par with the original, but falls flat due to a much shorter playtime and lack of improvement on the formula that was already getting a little stale by the end of the last game. And because of this and despite a massive marketing campaign, the game flopped, getting very mixed reviews and only selling around 500,000 copies, almost three times as less as the first. Other than a pretty good 3DS game nobody ever talks about, this marked the end of the Epic Mickey franchise. Even though Warren from the first game had always envisioned it as a trilogy, and had even planned to make the third game a full-on musical, merely using the second game's musical segments as a test for it, sadly this finale never came to be, with Disney shutting down Junction Point after the game failed to bring in the profits they had hoped for. This also caused production to be stopped on other Epic Mickey projects that were being at least talked about, such as a somewhat recently discovered spin-off called Epic Mickey Racers, Take a guess what that was. And another planned game called Epic Donald, which never made it past the concept stages, but looking at the art for it makes me really wish we'd have got it, as it takes heavy influence from the 1950s comics. It's sad to see how much work went into promoting this series only for it to ultimately fail. Disney even released a comic titled Tales from Wasteland on their Epic Mickey app, which of course is no longer available. But with rumours about a remake on the horizon, such as a developer's LinkedIn profile stating they were working on a remake of a third-party Disney action game, the future of the series is still up in the air. Personally, like many others, I would love to see them give the Epic Mickey series another chance, as its potential is still yet to be truly tapped. I'd especially like to see them try to focus more on polishing up the gameplay and control since the foundation for the game is already there, but until the remake eventually happens, is it true that the Epic Mickey series is deserving of such a prestigious word like epic? Sure, whatever, I don't care. <laughs>